my grandfather thought some of the rides and attractions that he saw in Coney Island would do well in England, he came with the ride to Blackpool. He tried it out on the sand hills of Blackpool. It was a great success, and from that one ride, Blackpool Fetch Beach was born. People said, oh, Mr. Bean, a shilling for a roller coaster. Yes, yes, he said, it's, uh, it's expensive, I know. But then, you see, for that, I shall give them a mahogany pay desk and a terrazzo entrance floor. Point is, you should sit down, relax, let the car take you, go with the ride, don't hold back, let yourself go, and it's very enjoyable, very exhilarating. Oh, I can do that any time. Coming inside for a journey into the unknown. Fetch Beach is really about fun, about happiness, making old people young again and giving them just the best day out of their lives. Well, my great grandfather in 1896 was a real leader of the industry back then. He went to America and he went to study um, marketing in America and bought uh, an amusement park ride because he'd been to Coney Island. Eventually, because of the cotton mills and because of the Industrial Revolution, he decided that he would build um, the ride in Blackpool because the trains came up to Blackpool and brought thousands and thousands of people to Blackpool during the holiday season. So he started Blackpool Pleasure Beach because of everything that was happening in America at that time, but because he was able to buy this ride and bring it to Blackpool. And so that's how Pleasure Beach began. And he also was well known within the amusement park industry because IAPA at that time was based in Chicago. And he used to go over in the 1920s and talk about the amusement park industry in the United Kingdom. My grandfather, Leonard Thompson, he joined the industry because he married my grandmother, Doris Thompson, and um, he did an amazing job. He was a, a brilliant businessman and he took the park and built it up and went, it went from strength to strength. And clearly he was very involved in the IARPA, in the International Association of Amusement Parks and Tr Attractions. And he, um, he basically built the park and then when he sadly passed away, my father took over and um, he changed the park in all aspects. He put in the biggest, fastest um, roller coaster in the world, the big one, and um, it went from strength to strength. And um, our family uh, have brought up names like Big Dipper. My grandfather created the word Big Dipper. He also created the word um, Ghost Train because that was the pretzel ride originally. And, um, and now it's my turn to be the custodian of the business. And so hopefully I've made a huge difference um, creating little pockets of sort of areas of calm, I would say, with the fountains and with gardens and with some shows. And also, of course, I've um, put in some exciting rides like Icon, but I work with my brother and we produce what we have today at Pleasure Beach. My first memory of Blackpool Pleasure Beach is from 1994. Now, I did visit the Pleasure Beach a lot as a child, long before 1994, probably as early as the 80s when I was a baby with my parents, but my first memory of Blackpool Pleasure Beach is the big one on its opening day. I remember being excited as like a five-year-old from my dad going on it and watching him going on it and just being like, why is my dad going on this massive roller coaster? But the one memory that always sticks with me with this ride and that day it's been on the Pleasure Beach Express with my mum and we were going round it when it used to go the old way round and the big one came over where it goes into the on-ride photo section and I just remember seeing this flash of silver and the train flying over above our heads and, and saying to my mum, what is that ride? I, I, I've never seen that ride before and I remember my mum saying, that's the ride your dad's just been on, it's the new one, it's the big one and I was just like, wow, it's so noisy and fast and exciting and I don't know why but that always sticks with me and it's even now to this day when I go on the Pleasure Beach Express I still think of that memory from 1994. 
My earliest memory of Blackpool Pleasure Beach is arriving in the car park, jumping out the car and running with everything I had to the board to see if I was finally tall enough to get on something new. Usually the big one. <laughs> but yeah, it was running up to that board, just standing by. I'm a big enough, I'm a big enough, I'm a big enough. I want to get on everything. I was, I was always really keen to get on everything. Um, probably helped by some bribes from my dad to go on everything. My earliest memory of Blackpool Pleasure Beach was when uh, I was just six years old. So uh, just at the start of the 70s, uh, I went there uh, on a what it was called a British Rail Merrymaker train ticket. It was a day out train ticket, Blackpool and back in a day from London. And the first ride that I came across was called the Grand National. And at the time I did not know what it was. And I went on it, I had my eyes closed the whole time, I was completely scared. But at the end of the ride, something made me want to go back on again. And I did, kept my eyes open, saw what was happening, loved it. And from that moment on, my love of the Pleasure Beach was formed. Grand National, going on there like, with my dad, who like, wasn't a fan of roller coasters, but I must have only been like the age of five and I was adamant that we was going on. And then going round and him pinning me in the seat because he was frightened that I'd fly out and me just like loving life, waving to my mum going under the bridge and everything. It's just, just brings back so many happy memories and that's where obviously my love for Blackpool Pleasure Beach came from, just being there with my family and like I say, enjoying them moments as well. I was like five or six going on National, kept lapping it. I'd dread to think how much money they spent just lapping that one ride. Don't remember going any others, just that one. Every day after school, my mother used to take us and we used to park on the promenade and watch the Big Dipper and the log flume go round. Now in those days there wasn't a, a, an ocean boulevard so if you parked on the promenade you could see the Big Dipper straight in front of you. It was fantastic. And then at least once a week my grandfather used to take us into the Pleasure Beach and we used to go on some of the, the kiddie rides but he was obsessed with the Grand National and how the trains used to switch sides in the station and pretty much every week he tried to work out how this trick was performed. Sometimes we'd go on the cable way which we used to call the buckets and, and you used to be able to look down on the Grand National but of course you could never see where the cr tracks cross over <laughs> and it's it's really quite sad actually that unfortunately he died and never found out how this trick was performed because in those days there was no way to google it and, and of course when google came along and i was able to google it and find find out that the nash was a, a mobius loop you know i almost had to to look up and say to my grandfather see that's how they did it going on the grand national um with my dad when i was probably about eight or nine and I just remember this was with the old, um, the old style trains with just a single lap bar, and just going down that first drop, and over the, over the airtime hill of the double drop, just being like, practically stood up in the seat because of all the airtime down the hill. I uh, first visited the Pleasure Beach in the 90s with my family. Um, we used to come up here in February during the WOW weekends, the 50p weekends, and then later on in the year during the illuminations. Um, so yeah, pretty much all of my birthday money, Christmas money would be saved up and uh, I'd spend it here at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. My earliest memory of Blackpool Pleasure Beach was like many people who lived in the northwest. It was uh, illuminations time, so autumn, and uh, taking the trip to the lights. And then, you know, you'd be driving down the promenade and then you'd look out the car window and you'd see the amazing Pleasure Beach lit up at night. Um, I distinctly remember the curves of the Big Dipper um, always, you know, looking fantastic. And then my, my first memory of actually being in the park is the ghost train of all places. Um, I remember that very well because as a young child, um, it was quite intimidating with the skeleton at the top and the train that was out of control. But not only just the ride itself, but also the sights and the smells and the just general atmosphere of that, that area of the park was just, uh, as a child, was kind of overwhelming. Um, I remember the Enterprise. I remember the, the Grand National, of course, and the water chute, actually. 
because of uh, you'd stand with your face pressed against the glass and the, the chute, the boats would, uh, the cars would come down the chute and the water would splash up against the glass. Um, amazing memories as a kid, amazing memories. As you can hear, I'm not an English speaking person, I'm not native. I'm from the Netherlands and well, my first experience with the Blackpool Pleasure Beach was like when I was 16, 17 years old. And I was looking at the internet at some roller coasters, as you all know, at the roller coaster database, of course. And well, I knew there were roller coaster parks like Six Flags Magic Mountain and of course Cedar Point. But there was a small park, which I thought it was small, in Blackpool. And I was looking on the internet and I told to my friends, whoa, they have some roller coasters over there that are 90 years old and still operating. I need to go to visit that place. So the year after we went to the park and I was like the starter in my career. So in my roller coaster fan career, so I was like, I didn't know anything about that park. And the moment I, set, I, I walked in the park, I, I was like shocked about the amount of roller coaster track you see everywhere. And I think that's the best part of Blackwood Pleasure Beach. You walk in the park, it's history, it's roller coasters, it's everything. And I walked in the park and I was looking at the big one crossing. I saw the Valhalla ride with the big waterfalls. It was amazing. My first ever ride on Valhalla, um, because honestly, like I, I didn't know anything about the ride before going on it. Um, and I was six at the time and it just blew me away. I love the Pleasure Beach. It's actually one of my favorite parks in, in the world. Not just because of the rides and, and the location and, and the evolution the park has gone through the last 15 years, but because of the history of the park, the heritage, the, the quirkiness, the very special atmosphere you always experience when, when you visit the park. So happy birthday, Pleasure Beach, and here's to the next 125 years. Make you feel young, that's just what we do. Make this day you forever knew you'd have the time of your life. I feel so alive, you're coming with me. Don't ever stop feeling this way. We have all the time, you'll never come back down. We're making this place just for you. We've worked with um, Blackpool Pleasure Beach uh, on numerous occasions throughout my career, um, working for my previous company. Um, we helped on several of the ride attractions there over the years, uh, including the big one uh, at the initial stage of, of build in 1994 when it opened up as Project 94. Um, so yeah, we've, we've, we've played a significant role in uh, rides within the actual Blackpool Pleasure Beach uh, facility. My role here at Pleasure Beach is quite an interesting one um, because I cross over a lot of departments um, uh, from entertainment to creative so I look after um, a whole plethora of, of departments but the good thing uh, about my role is that I get to uh, creatively conceive a concept or uh, something for Halloween or something for an event on park or a show and then I go from the aspects of choreographing, mixing the music, putting that all together, to also making the props and scenery that tie everything together to give that immersive feel of when people are watching and looking and, and hearing and seeing the shows and productions and events brought together. Operations is a bit of a paradox, really, because the, you need consistency, so a lot of work goes into making sure that that things run in you know, a structured way and follow a process. And so if you're a, a ride operator, that's a big part of it. But then it's a paradox because every day is also different as well. And when you work in an amusement park, um, you never get 100% 
quite know what's going to happen. So, um, but in terms of preparation, we do loads of work before the, the gates open each day in conjunction with engineering. We have all the ride checks and so on. I guess the fun part for um, the operators is they get to do a trial run um, and test out the rides each day before we open. But, um, you know, I'm making that sound fun, but actually to, to deliver... Um, ride operations consistently all day every day to get a good throughput and to deliver the fun is actually really hard work and they do a really really good job. Dear Thompson family it's uh, really a great day for me to tell you the sincere congratulations to your 125th birthday. What a great day today. What a great history you have. Make people happy around the world but the most important thing for me is the personal friendship to your family. Great ideas came up when I talked to Jeffrey, when I talked to Amanda, when I talked to the family. And uh, I think you are a light tower for the industry, worldwide known. One of the oldest family owned business, which involved a lot of creative things for the whole industry around the world. And I wish you all the best. I wish you all the best for your personal future for your park, for your creative ideas. And in the name of the whole Mac family, hope to see you soon. All the best, all the best to the Thompson family. I remember the Little Dipper before it was called the Zipper Dipper and uh, the gold mine. I remember going on the gold mine and, and as you started and you went in, there was that really quite scary for a child little drop down into the darkness with the wind flying into your face that was quite that was quite scary as i got a bit older one of the highlights was going on one of the last rides of the reel sometimes known as the virginia reel it was like a rickety old spinning wooden roller coaster that used to go zigzagging down and then down a great big spiral spinning all the way and into a dark tunnel and you were spinning so fast by the time you went into that dark tunnel so fabulous memories there from childhood growing up in Blackpool Visiting the Pleasure Beach in the 70s and 80s was wonderful. It had so many traditional rides. Of course, we didn't have things like B&M rides that were going upside down and hanging underneath the tracks. We just had traditional wooden coasters, up and down, airtime, great fun from start to finish. Every ride at the Pleasure Beach, you got on smiling, you got off laughing, and it just was everything you needed from an amusement park. When you walk into the Pleasure Beach, you leave your worries in the car park and just forget about them and enjoy the day there. And that was exactly what the, the Pleasure Beach always did and still does. Fly machines right through to Icon What we have here is for everyone Pleasure Beach is here for you I'm Robert Ulrich, president of the American Coaster Enthusiasts. And for all ASA members worldwide, I'd like to wish Blackpool Buzzer Beach a happy 125th anniversary. It's a great milestone, and ACE members have always enjoyed the hospitality of the park and look forward to many, many more years of family fun. Whilst visiting the park um, in the mid-80s, I, I bumped into, by chance, um, Jeffrey Thompson, the, the uh, managing director at the time. And uh, I recognised him from... Uh, the Jim Will Fix It program uh, where the Boy Scouts were riding the revolution uh, drinking milkshakes and uh, I went up and spoke to him and he, he was a really nice person and he invited me into the archives and showed me lots of photographs of how the Pleasure Beach was in the past um, and he explained some plans for the future and a friendship was formed then uh, we started to have regular contact and um, I suggested to him once about getting groups of people together to visit parks as I uh, visit the park as I'm sure I wasn't the only person that had the same level of interest and he said he would support that if I did and so um, the idea for the club came about and um, it basically grew from from that first meeting with Mr Thompson. Well, what a lot of people don't realise is that the 235 club was actually started by the Pleasure Beach um, a couple of years before the big one was due to open and it was a way of um, selling tickets really to be the first to ride. Um, the, the event that everybody remembers from the early days was midnight riding and it literally was 
what it says it, it says on the tin. You know, we would spend the day in the parks around 10 o'clock at night, and then we'd all head to the Star Pub, which was uh, where the Boulevard Hotel is located now. Um, we'd have a few beers, we'd have some food, we'd watch the entertainment, we'd have more beers, we'd have more food. And then at midnight, the park management would come and collect us. Uh, as you know, the park management would have been with us actually in the event. They would take us into the park, and then we would do an hour on the big one from midnight to one o'clock in the morning, lights out, you know, with a few beers in our bellies. It was a really, really good experience. Um, a few years after that, the Pleasure Beach decided that the best people to, to run the club was the members, and um, I became the chairman. And myself and a couple of other key members, we decided to kind of diversify the club a little bit and take it away from not just being about the big one, but actually focus on the, all of the park, because obviously, as you guys know, as we all know, Pleasure Beach has got so much to offer. So we were the, we were the organization that did the first um, behind the scenes tours. You know, we took members into parts of that park that nobody had seen before. Um, we still did the exclusive ride sessions. We did stuff with the shows, behind the scenes tours of the shows, stage works, etc. We did some brilliant stuff um, and some amazing events. And um, I've got a confession to make, you know, that those events weren't really for the members. Those were events were for me because I was the one, I was really so infused and passionate about Pleasure Beach. Those places I wanted to see and parts of the business that I wanted to understand because, you know, I wanted to work in the, the amusement part, the theme park business. And, and, you know, I learned a lot from Pleasure Beach, you know, as I'm sure a lot of people have. So um, those were the early days of, of 235 Club, which later became Club Pleasure Beach, which then became uh, Pleasure Beach experience when I handed the organization over to you guys and and it's great to see um, even from a distance over here in Malaysia that you're doing some amazing events still um, and long may they continue. Over the years because we've had over 30 black bull bashes uh, that's the name of our event that we have annually at the Pleasure Beach uh, we've had lots of uh, strange and interesting things happen of course we have exclusive riding on on uh, the main coasters which is always uh, nice and a privilege but uh, we've been joined at lunches by, by different people, including um, the late Doris Thompson, who uh, told, told everybody a story about uh, how the Big Dipper was created and the reason that they charged what they did for it, particularly because it, it had a, uh, uh, a turnstile made of brass, I think was the story. It was a long time ago now. Um, so, so it was just great that they would join in, join in the fun with us. Um, in recent times, um, Barbara Thompson joined us on the... Um, avalanche uh, with a cake to celebrate an anniversary um, and so forth so uh, the family's always been very supportive of our events and we've always been very supportive of the park and uh, it's just wonderful that it still remains part of the Thompson family. My first uh, Coastal Club memory at Blackpool Pleasure Beach was even going back in the days before Pleasure Beach experience um, when we were the BPB guide back in 2008 was the very first um, ERT event that I ever attended and we had ERT on the big one on a Saturday morning which was absolutely brilliant and I think coming further on to when we started the uh, Pleasure Beach experience obviously we had the big one in July 2012 and then one of the real memorable events for me and I think it might have been about 2013 or 2014 was when we had a Valhalla ERT for half an hour in the morning uh, so for, I think we've three lap, we've got three laps in on uh, Valhalla in the half an hour, and of course we'd all come in silliness. Everyone that watches us regularly knows what PB events are like. Silliness. We all had um, oh daft glasses and snorkels and masks and all all sorts on, and we're all in like virtually beach clothes going on it. And the thing I remember is we got that wet on it that the, the ride had a mask like a about a 45 minute queue in the morning and as everyone's seen us get off the queue just evaporated because of how, how wet we come off it but obviously they didn't realise we'd done three straight laps on it and just the silliness and the, the, the comedy of that event and the way everyone like was just in really high spirits and just the, the, the group um, dynamic just then brings me forward to the most recent one which was uh, September 21 um, obviously we had the big one in the uh, Friday night uh, last rides where we were all mucking about doing the, the whoop whoop in the station um, and then the, the PBE track walk the, obviously the Oktoberfest wasn't officially part of the event but pretty much the entire event attendees got involved with it and we're, uh, we're having a laugh with that one so that just, that just like, rounded it off as one of the best events we've ever had Back when I first started getting into coasters in 1990, um, I was reading about any park I could find information on, 
and one park in particular kept on coming up into conversations and a lot of the stuff I was reading, and that was Blackpool Pleasure Beach. It just seemed too good to be true, and I made a goal that one day I will visit Blackpool Pleasure Beach. That became a reality for me when I went on a tour with the American Coaster Enthusiast in July of 2002. We arrived at the park in the afternoon and we knew the park was only going to be open for maybe five hours after we got there. Due to the park layout, uh, I managed to ride every single coaster in that park in a matter of just a few hours, just you know, leaving one ride and then there's another ride right there for you to go into the queue. I was at this amazing park that I had always wanted to visit and I was there with some of my best friends riding some incredible rides. Still to this day, the way that Blackpool Pleasure Beach keep his history alive about also editing news of editing new stuff to the park, like Icon, which is I think a phenomenal ride. It's just mind blowing what they can do in that park, and I really like the kinetic energy in the park. I think that's the best part of the uh, the Blackpool Pleasure Beach. And when I was that kid, I was like 16 years old. I was like, whoa, this place is magical. It's amazing. It's history, it's Blackpool, it's, I really liked it. And till this day, the park really, really, really sets up new standards with their rides. And still keeping that old rides there, I think that's the best part of the park. And, you know, I send a message to the, to the Blackpool fan community and I ask them, how on earth do they fit three dark rides in one building? Like the boat ride, the haunted house, and the Wallace and Gromit ride. And I was like, they made that quite a long time ago and still after all that long time it's still really delivering a good ride and in that crazy amount of little space they put so much action in it i think that's also uh, the best part of the blackpool uh, pleasure beach some nights we came on a friday night i'd finished school on the friday and then uh, come on the friday night and we were here till about 10 11 o'clock in, in the evening uh, just just come for some night rides. It was it was a pay per ride back then, so you, you just did a, just came and just went on uh, what you what you wanted to go on. I have two favourite memories from Blackpool Pleasure Beach. The first one was my first go on the Grand National. I was a young teenager, and I remember talking about it the whole way to Blackpool, all 76 miles in the car, talking to my mum and dad about going on the Grand National. And I remember my mum was trying to put me off the idea, whereas my dad was like. You have to go on it. It's a great roller coaster. And I remember going on it for the first time. And as it came out of the station, I remember my mum and dad watching. And my dad was like, make sure you're holding on. Make sure you're holding on. He'd not realised that from, it was different from when he was a child and he'd actually got lap bars. But what I didn't realise he was warning me about was the airtime. And it was the first time I experienced airtime on a roller coaster. And I remember going down the double drop and just the airtime was so incredible. And I was just like yeah, I, I need more of this on these roller coasters. And, and that was what really kicked in my enthusiasm for being a thrill seeker at Blackpool Pleasure Beach. It was like, this ride is incredible. And I remember that whole day that we'd planned to go on lots of rides at the Pleasure Beach. And I was just like, just, can I just have more money to go on the Grand National? More money, more money. And we just, because it, it was back in the days of paper ride. And I just remember lapping it all day with my friend from school. And, and we didn't actually go on anything else other than the Grand National because it was the first time we'd been on it. And it was just like, this ride is so good. I just need to keep going on it. One of my favorite memories at Blackpool Pleasure Beach is actually on here on roller coaster as it was. Um, I think I believe it was my first ride on it and I'd decided that I wanted to sit on the back row. That was it, I was sitting on the back row and I just remember the look that my mum and dad gave to each other like, she doesn't know. <laughs> and yeah, I, it's one of the rare times I remember my mum and dad being together while we were here and us all getting along and doing something together. So. Yeah, that, that was, I must be quite small then, but yeah, back in the roller coaster days, sat on the back row and I loved it. Congratulations to 125 years of Blackpool Pleasure Beach. You opened in 1896, which is unbelievable. IAPA, as the global association for the attractions industry, actually just started 22 years later. So you see how visionary you were at this stage. I would like to congratulate the Blackpool Pleasure Beach, the team, the Thompson family and especially managing director, past IAPA chair and I'm proud to say my friend Amanda Thompson to this fantastic achievement. 
You, as the Thompsons family, have run this business over so many generations and you have stood firm during world wars, during a pandemic, while you still keep investing into making this park better every day. You do not only invest for the Pleasure Beach, but you invest for the town, for the region, and actually for our attractions industry, which is wonderful. And you can see that in the park. You see everywhere the passion, the dedication, and the loyalty of the Thompson family to this amazing product. And the most wonderful thing, for all those years, you have brought joy to the people. You are a true icon to this industry. And I'm very proud that you have been a member of IAPA for so long, and I very much look forward to what you have in store for the next 125 years. Congratulations. What makes it so special to work at Blackpool Pleasure Beach is I think we do everything in-house. I think there's, there's nothing here from out on park to operations to behind the scenes to maintenance and safety we can't do. I think uh, the Pleasure Beach family um, can do it all really and I think that's what makes it so special is that if you can dream it, we can build it or we can do it. So I think that for me is what's really magical about working here. I mean, it's, it's actually a privilege to work in an amusement park. I love working at Blackpool Pleasure Beach um, because, well, because every day is different, but also because I love rides and roller coasters, um, but also the guests um, and the, the mix of people that come through here. And when you're essentially um, selling fun, that's a great thing to sell to people. And, um, you know, it's a fun environment. We're a family business. It feels very much when you work here like you're part of something bigger, a part of a big family. Um, and I think that's quite unique, really. And then when you add into that all the guests and all the rides and all the different teams of people that are working to all make it all happen and come together, um, it just makes it a really unique place to work. So I'm really, really proud of the fact that we're 125 years old and going strong and uh, want us to be here for the next 125 years. In 2011, uh, when I started working here at Blackpool Pleasure Beach, I started on the Pepsi Max Big One, which was one of the best experiences of my life. Uh, working with all the team on there, you become like family. When I was approached um, by the team at Blackpool to come in and give them some advice on replacement tracks, which is not something that I've done before, um, through the, 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 the significant progress that's been made over the years through technology, it allows us now to do different things um, and to give people more of what they want rather than just guesswork. So the, the introduction came two years ago almost now uh, when we did the first four installation of tracks in the summer of 2019. Um, since then we, we, we've been contracted to work further with, with Blackpool and produce more of the tracks. Um, last season we did the, the, the tunnel section, which is notably one of the worst, worst parts of the ride. Uh, and, and then now this, this next batch that we've just done, um, which is bit, resides behind Big Blue, uh, is a significant amount more track than, than what we're used to doing. However, the, we've, we've, we've learned a lot over the past uh, 12, 18 months and enhanced that with extra software and, and enhancing the skills in our operatives to provide a better, more sophisticated track. Um, and I just manage the process. The guys actually do the work themselves, um, from Jim, who manages the, the project side and the works team, to Glenn, who does all the digital information, and then onto the shop floor where Shem does all the surveying and capturing all the, all the good bits uh, that pull it all together. Uh, and I, I just manage the process and make the team work better. Tricking my grandma onto the Big Dipper 
She thought we were coming here onto roller coaster. She, she'd been on it, she was fine with it. She was more than happy to come and have a ride on roller coaster. But the way that you used to be able to walk through and just go straight, straight across and get onto Big Dipper, she didn't really realise and then it was a bit late and she wasn't particularly happy with us. But yeah, that, that, that was quite funny. It's just with everything being so close in together, you can get away with kind of leading someone the wrong way when they're not so big on roller coasters. My other favourite memory of Blackpool Pleasure Beach is the first time that I went on the big one. And it took 10 years to do it. The big one opened in 1994. And the first time I went on it was in 2004. And it had taken so many years to persuade myself to do it. And we came here on one of the, the old WOW weekends and it was 10 pound. I remember spending all of my pocket money to come to Blackpool Pleasure Beach on that day. And I just thought I might go on the big one. I might finally do it. And all day I'd been thinking about going on it. And I remember going on things like the Grand National again, the Big Dipper, and I was thinking, surely the big one's not much worse in terms of fear and scares than those, ri those rides. So I remember going on the big one that first day and it was a magical experience because it was dark, the whole park was lit up, the big one's train lights were on, Blackpool was all lit up, and it was just, I remember going up the lift hill thinking, I finally got over that big hurdle of going on the ride I've been so fascinated by since a child but so scared of at the same time and going down that first drop I always feel like that was a life-changing moment because I felt like I could not only get over any fear that I had but also it was like I've finally been on the ride I've been most fascinated about and it just it was life-changing because it meant that the following year I got a season pass for Blackpool Pleasure Beach I did nothing but go on the big one all the time whenever I come to Blackpool Pleasure Beach all those years on I still do that now and this, this ride and this park was definitely sort of life-changing for me in a good way. And I'll always be thankful to Blackpool Pleasure Beach and the big one especially for that. Oh, lots about Blackpool Pleasure Beach uh, made things special for me. Uh, the illuminations obviously from the big one, uh, the big one all being lit up at night, train lights, chase lights, uh, all the top decks on around the park. Uh, and just the atmosphere really, like it was electric, the paths were absolutely packed, uh, the rides were running at full capacity, um, and it's just, it was just an atmosphere unlike any other. My mum and dad took us to a guest house in Blackpool, and one of the things that we used to do was frequently visit the, the Blackpool Pleasure Beach and, and go on the rides um, and en enjoy it as a family. So yeah, it has, it has a special place uh, for me and my family, and we, we try and get there as much as we can. Uh, now to, to ride the current rides um, and obviously its significance now is that we're riding over better pits of the track and uh, now as we've had an involvement in that so it's really good. I guess my favourite time for the Pleasure Beach was probably around about 2004-2005. First reason it was when my son was young and he was growing up enjoying Blackpool Pleasure Beach and the log flume was still there and he loved the log flume. One thing that really impressed me the most about the park is there definitely is kind of like a traditional American park vibe to it. While I was there, there were certain areas of the park that reminded me of parks like Kennywood. Even though the vibe of Blackpool Pleasure Beach is its own thing, I could feel whispers of some of the more traditional parks in the United States while visiting Blackpool. Having visited a lot of uh, American parks, the, the Pleasure Beach is probably one of the nearest parks we have to a traditional uh, seaside amusement park in America. And I'm thinking the likes of Santa Cruz and Coney Island and so forth. Um, they really have recreated that magic of the 40s and the 50s uh, when coasters were at their boom in, in, in the States. And the way that they've still carried that on, they've still keeping all that tradition in the park. And you have that ideal location. The, the sea is just across the street. And of course, years ago, the, the, the Pleasure Beach was on the beach. It's uh, the way that it's evolved. So it's just great that it's got all that history. You know when you're going in there, it's somewhere special, somewhere that you can just enjoy it. And I hope that it stays that way and, and continues for many years to come. Obviously, it's not a museum. It's, it's, well, it's a living museum. So they have to invest and they've done that in recent times with Icon and the big one and... Um... Old rides, new rides, all different genres of roller coasters. So, I mean, a uh, family ride, so there's something for everyone. It literally is the uh, all-in-one park, if you like. It really does sort of take you back to your childhood, especially here if you've got that 
nostalgia like I have for, you know, coming here when I was six. So I guess that because I grow, grew up in Blackpool and spent so much time as a child on Blackpool Pleasure Beach, I just associate it with being a child. Even though I'm an adult, the Pleasure Beach evokes so many childhood memories. The, the smell of the candy floss, the, the tunes that they play on the rides and the, the smell of the oil and the grease and the banging of the, of the ghost train doors. It's, it's, just, it's just great. So yeah, I think that if you've got some sort of childhood association yourself with Blackpool Pleasure Beach, however old you get, it's always going to make you feel like a child again. It just brings back youth, or you feel young again every single time that you, you arrive and have fun. Those two days I spent at the park were among two of the best days I've ever spent at any park. We, we felt younger while we were at that park. I hope within the next few years I can return because that place is truly, truly magical and I cannot wait to return. Having been to a couple of the parks over in the States, notable to her, that have got sort of similar, similarities to Pleasure Beach are Coney Island in Kennywood. And there's a definite um, uh, sort of a pattern and a trend of obviously Kennywood's got so many rides that replicate or are very similar to ones at Pleasure Beach. You look at Moby, the only two Mobius Loop Woody's left. You've got a, their, their Woody's all, over 100 years old. Here he's very close to 100 years old. Um, you've got the Turtle Chase, the Whip. You've got an Arrow Hyper, or what used to be an Arrow Hyper. Um, and yeah, I think coming here, you just, you do feel like a kid again because you just forget everything. Especially when you're here for a weekend. You come for two or three days and it's just like, you can forget everything else, just park the car up and go and enjoy yourself for three, two or three days or even just a day. What do I like about Pleasure Beach? That's an easy question to answer, everything. Um, growing up, I was an Alton Towers fanboy. The Alton Towers was the first part that my parents took me to back in 1980. And I knew then I wanted to work in the, the kind of the theme park, amusement park industry. And uh, as you can see behind me, I'm currently in Malaysia. I'm getting ready to open a theme park at uh, Resorts World Genting, not far from Kuala Lumpur. Uh, this is Genting Sky World, so hopefully we can open this park to, to guests later this year. Um, but I didn't really, didn't really discover Pleasure Beach until the 90s. And, um, I, and then it was at that point I kind of realised, wow, you know, Pleasure Beach has got everything. The rides, the shows, the entertainment, to, to coin the, the, the song, you know, from, words from the song. The adrenaline, you know, spectacular. Um, it's an amazing place, you know, and, and there's nothing to not love about the park. And, and it's great to see that you guys are carrying on the tradition of, of what we used to do with 235 Club and, and Club Pleasure Beach and, uh, and, and making, you know, areas of the park accessible to everybody because it really is something that needs to be, sh you know, shown, shown off. And it, it's great to see people like Andy involved now, Andy Highgate, you know, he's a, he's a theme park enthusiast like all of us. And, um, and his passion is now coming through in the events and, and I, I know he's fallen in love with the place and I know he's doing some great stuff with the place as well so it's in good hands but uh, Pleasure Beach, I love everything about it and I hope to be back but well, it won't be this year unfortunately because of the pandemic but definitely in 2022 uh, absence definitely does make the heart grow fonder when you drive into Blackpool you see the big one on the horizon and um, it is an icon of the town but um, but you know to have four wooden coasters um, a range of different steelies for a coaster enthusiast like myself is a is a big deal but I think the, the thing that makes us special is we also have a mix of other rides so we have classic dark rides classic rides like the flying machines um, behind me um, and you know the river caves and so on and then I think people are very nostalgic about rides that they rode when they were a child and then when they grow up um, they want to bring their own kids and have those experiences and I think the great thing about us is that we deliver that but also we surprise people and they come and they ride something new like Icon that perhaps they weren't expecting here and I think it's that that blend that makes uh, makes a day here so magical and special. I think the special thing about Blackpool Pleasure Beach is the history that it brings. So if you're, say, uh, of an older age, like I'm getting to, um, you remember Pleasure Beach um, as a kid, but you still have new memories as an adult. But you also 
have the memories with your younger family who, again, in the next 125 years to 200 years, will be creating more memories with their families and their generations. I think that's one of the special things about Pleasure Beach is it crosses all generations of families. Blackpool Pleasure Beach has definitely succeeded in its mission in making adults feel like children again. Um, I'm 35 and I'm still making the three and a half hour journey up here um, with my kids now, who are now sort of falling in love with the Pleasure Beach and uh, making new memories of themselves that I hope they pass on to their children. Blackpool Pleasure Beach helps make adults feel like children again because as you grow up, as you come here, you start doing new things. There's something different for everyone. Like we could bring our little one here and there's plenty that we can go on with him and just have a laugh and be daft with. But then there's also stuff for us to go and have fun on. It's not just one or the other. There's, there is something for everyone. There's the stuff at the very low scale that we could take our tiny baby on. And then the stuff he could do now he's three and then the stuff that he'll soon get on, which is exciting for everyone. The stuff that we could do that's exciting but not so thrilling. And then you've got the big one at the top of the scale, which is just amazing. And it's just one of those things that you can't take too seriously. You're sitting down to be taken up in the air, dropped and thrown about a bit. You, you, you can't be too serious about that. So. I think that's the, the best way is just that there is something for everyone and everyone can have fun in one space all together and grow up through it and never be bored. The legacy of Blackpool Pleasure Beach and the Thompson family will always be that Blackpool Pleasure Beach is a special place for making adults feel like children again. A place where you can forget about all of your worries, all of the problems in the world, everything that's going on outside of this part that you might be overthinking about, worrying about, or it's having an impact on your life. When you come to Blackpool Pleasure Beach, you forget about all your worries, you have a great time, and it truly does make adults feel like children again. Pleasure Beach is really about fun, about happiness, of making old people young again, and giving them just the best day out of their lives. Just for you